Hi everybody, welcome back to the Desmore Works channel and today we are getting on with the Ducati 1098S service before I put it up for sale. Uh, first thing we're going to be doing today is belt change. So starting today's video from a slightly different angle because you're currently sat on my top of my Lotus Esprit's roof. But if you follow my Instagram account you would have seen that I have rearranged the garage stroke workshop to try and make it a slightly better experience. So let me talk you through my uh, train of thought on that. So the aim is I'm going to be buying a couple of new benches and a new toolbox when um, finances and job security allow. The plan is that I'm going to be putting those here. So I've put my old benches in just to see what it would allow for space wise. Because um, I'll have benches without any backs on them to give a big build area for the engines in future. The aim of that is to get rid of this big desk here. I'll build up a storage cabinet to put some bits and pieces in. And then I'm possibly thinking about buying a um, vapor blaster set up so I can do that myself in house. And then that, what that's given me is a space to be able to film slightly better on the bikes as well. So I've now got proper lighting around both sides of the bike when it's on the bench so hopefully that will give slightly better quality um, I'm going to invest in some stands as well for the cameras so that I can get sort of different angles from back here and from here when I'm filming as well um, because I tend to have to sit quite close up to the bike to be able to film at the moment so hopefully that will get some improvement and then the next step is I'll be um, putting some sheeting up in the sort of ceiling area as well just so that I can get some light reflection in here because it sort of absorbs the light a little bit and then last thing you'll notice that I am missing a bike so we've got the RS250 underneath the bike blanket there the Panigale's here 2748 race bikes are here the 1098 S is up on the bench where's the Ducati ST2 that's at my storage unit so um, whilst I can't use it at the moment and all the work is done as it stands I have put that into storage while I await getting all the fairing panels and everything painted which is still on for the 14th of December okay but enough with the updates so if you're remembering the update video the plan is to fully service this and then put it up for sale so the intention is um, today I'm going to be doing the belts um, from that point forward the next video will possibly be a service of the clutch I've got a uh, race line set up for the brakes that I've never put on so I'm going to put that on so brakes will get a good clean new line twin line race setup will be fitted I've noticed today that it looks like I've got a little bit of passing oil on the fork seals so I'm going to be doing the fork seals with fresh oil into there as well I've got a whole new set of pads turning up for the front calipers and rear calipers so we'll get that done and then I won't film it but I'll be doing an oil change filter change uh, because I've done that in one of the early videos link up there somewhere um, and I'll get a new set of spark plugs fitted into the bike as well and then as you can see yeah dirty so the bike will have a really good clean so that it's ready to go up for sale so I'll get rid of a lot of the track detritus that you currently see on the fairings as it stands at the moment and then on this side of the bike I've got a shark's fin set up to go on here so a carbon protector to go on here that I've never fitted as well so we'll be getting that on prior to the bike going okay so first things first we need to get down to the belts now this might be slightly different to a standard bike um, I've never had a standard 1098 S so I'm not sure how the fairings are configured on the road going bike but um, what I need to do is I need to take out this side panel the seat panel so that I can get access to the belt covers on this side then on this side I need to take this left hand panel off so that I can get access to the turning gear cover on the alternator I'll pop that off so that I can get the turning gear in um, and then hopefully I should be able to take the spark plug out on this side without the need to remove 
the front wheel and the front fairing panel. Um, and I should hopefully be able to just loosen off the tank so that I can take out the vertical cylinder plug as well. And that's because obviously we don't want to turn against compression. Okay, so for me to get my side panels off, it's literally these hex headed Zeus clips and then the mini Zeus's and I can remove that panel. So let's just quickly do that. Okay, this, this side gives me access to this turning gear cover. You'll notice I've not had to take the lower fairing panel off and that's because it's secured back here. So I'm leaving that as is because I don't need any further access. And on this side, you'll now see that I can get into the lower belt cover. We just need to clear access for this upper belt cover. So what I need to do is get rid of this side of the seat unit. So I need to take the seat pad off and then take off this right hand side panel of the seat unit. Okay, so literally to get this side panel off here, I had to take off bolt, bolt, one bolt in there, bolt there, and then two bolts on the side of the seat unit, as you saw. To get the seat pad off, it was literally two bolts underneath the back end of the seat. And that effectively gives us access, so I can get into the vertical, and then the horizontal's fully exposed. The only bit I've got in the way, really, is I've got the oil breather hose going into the air box. What I need to do now is I'm just gonna clear some of this unnecessary clutter out of the way. So I'm gonna take off the vent pipe for the fuel. Just move that out of the way. Disconnect the electrics down this side. Just so I can get access to these bolts easier, you'll see. So if I just push that one out of the way as well. So I'm not fully removing it, but just making sure I've got enough play because I've got to get into a bolt there. There's a bolt just there, bolt there bolt just in there, bolt there, bolt there, bolt just here, here, and these ones are relatively easy to get to. Right, next thing I wanna do is I wanna get the spark plugs out so that I've got no compression in the engine. So these are stick coils held in by one bolt there. On this side, I'm also gonna to need to remove this temporarily so that I can undo the fuel tank lift it up so that I can get into the vertical cylinder as well. So let's just quickly pop that off. Right, I actually decided to take the fuel tank off in the end because you have to pull it back from here anyway and I figured with the amount of room I was going to get for the stick coil it'd be better to have it off and that means I can clean the top of the engine as well when I come to clean the bike so it'll give me a better access to it. You'll see these are the fuel connections that go into the tank. You've got to be careful when you squeeze these. They do have a tendency when they become brittle of splitting on one of these sort of sides. So be very careful when you're squeezing them. They can go soft, uh, sorry, hard, brittle, and snap. Once they snap, you lose all clamping force on that connection, so you'll have to get a new one. So just be cautious of that. Okay, so let's get these uh, stick cores out. So obviously you can see the vertical ones, nice and easy. Little Allen key there, and then we'll just pop that out. I had to loosen the radiator off so that and that's because this little fin on top of the coil just catches on the lip of the radiator. But we're off now. So what I need to do now is just pop out the spark plugs and then we'll have no compression on the engine. Right, both spark plugs are out. 
so we should technically have no compression in the cylinders when we turn the engine over I just need to get this turning cover off now so two little hex bolts in there just to remove okay turning tool connection is now exposed let's go grab the turning tool okay turning tool in I've taken off the lower fairing now just because it was just going to rub against this so I didn't want any undue pressure on there um, and I'm going to need it off for the oil change anyway I was trying to leave it on to show you how you could change the belts without the need to take it off on this bike okay last job to get access to the belts we need to take the belt covers off which is just a whole load of bolts so let's buzz those out okay belt covers are off as you can see it's in pretty good condition um, I did have to take the breather pipe off in the end because it just wouldn't wouldn't give me enough clearance to pull it off pull the cover off with the pipe in place so one slight minor amendment there what I just need to do now is is not far off being in the correct position but I need to turn it around the correct way to line up this little mark with the mark in the clutch case so that we know that we're at horizontal top dead center and can proceed to mount in the tools and proceed to take this set of belts off so let's do that quickly so that mark is now lined up same as the tester stretter engine uh, range from 749 and 999 we've got a set of tools to get this locked off in the correct position they're marked either horizontal or vertical so let's just put these on right so we're now lined up with the timing mark both the timing tools are in place and locked so what I'm going to do now is just release the tension in the belts and then we shall pop the belts off. Okay, both sets of belts off, tensioners are loose. So what I'll do now is I'll go grab the new belts and we will put them in place. So vertical goes in first horizontal goes in second okay so belts are in loosely um, you can get a special tool that makes setting the tension easier but you can just push your finger against it as you're sort of tightening it up so what I'll do is I'll get the frequency tool now and if you remember we need to take our set in here for the horizontal belt then we need to turn to vertical top dead center to be able to take the reading off of the vertical belt so let's tension the horizontal belt first get it into a position where we're comfortable with it I'll then tighten off these adjusters I'll put a loose setting into here so that we're comfortable with it. I'll then again tighten up these connections and take out the timing tool. Then we'll turn it to the correct position to finalize the tension for the vertical belt. All right. Oh, sorry, I should explain. The reason behind that is because these timing tools are set to work when the engine is in horizontal top dead center and they don't work when it's in vertical top dead center hence why I need to get a rough sort of uh, tension set up so I don't mess around with the timing too much before I turn turn the engine over because remember that whilst the cams are in the correct position these wheels are loose all right okay so 
I've got this one loosely at the moment set to 101 hertz. This is at 110 hertz. So I'm roughly in the right place for this one. I've nipped that up at the moment. I've nipped up that one as well. What I just need to do is retorque these down to 10 newton meters so I can then remove the timing tools, turn the engine over so it's in vertical top dead center, and then finally do the tension setting on here. Once that tension setting's done, I'll then spin the engine over a few times, check everything's okay, put it back into horizontal top dead center, check the belt tension again, put it into vertical top dead center, check the belt tension again. Okay, so let's tighten these um, lock nuts up, lock bolts up, sorry. Right, tools are removed. We're in vertical top dead center now. What I'm gonna do is just now fine adjust the tension on that belt. Right, tension set on there. Gonna spin the engine over a few times, get it back to horizontal top dead center, check the tension again. Okay, so belts are done. This one is at 107, this one is at 111, so I'm happy that it is within spec. What I'm gonna just do, just double check that these are tight now. So these are done up to 26 Newton meters on both of those. And then I'll start getting the covers back on. Okay, there we have it. Timing belt covers back on, timing belt change done. Just to recap, two new belts set to 110 hertz, turn over a few times, check the setting. This one's at 107, this one's at 111. Perfectly happy with that. Covers back on, 10 newton meters for all the bolts. Um, apart from I can't get into that one, that one and that one there. So they're just um, tight by finger. Not gonna put the plugs back in at the moment because I'm just waiting on the new ones to turn up because I've ordered a new set for the part of the service. So I think that that is gonna be a wrap for today's video because today's video just wanted to focus on doing the belts. So I hope that makes sense. Okay, so we're gonna call that video a wrap there. Brand new set of belts on the 1098S as part of the service. Next video, hopefully I should be able to do the brakes, the clutch cane, fit in the new spark plugs. I'll do an oil filter and oil change off camera because we've already done that in a previous video so I don't need to show you that. And then once all that's done I'm going to make sure all of the bodywork is off and then give the bike a really good clean down and check over to make sure that we get rid of any of the debris from the track sessions in the bike, make sure that there's no loose connections anywhere and that it's in a really presentable state before I put it up for sale. Hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, give us a like, wherever it is down there, please. And then any questions or comments, stick them down below and I'll answer the questions as quickly as I can. And if you're not subscribed to the channel, hit that subscribe button and notification bell for more content to come. Thanks for watching. See you at the next video then. Cheers.